Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Cartman from South Park. The colours that we're going to need are yellow, blue, a flesh coloured band, a red coloured uh, band and black. You're going to need a couple of clear bands as well, two pony beads, white, and three little e-beads which will be black. You're probably going to need maybe a c-clip, maybe not. We'll see how we go. My loom is in a slight offset configuration and I have five, five columns and I have the arrow pointing towards me. If you don't have a loom with arrows, the little um, opening to your loom peg is going to be facing towards you so the curved side is going to be facing away from you. I'm going to be double banding which means that every time I take two bands and I place them on top of each other and I place them on the pegs as if they were a single band and that is called double banding. So we will get started. We're going to start with yellow and we will double band unless told otherwise. I'm going to move to blue. I'm sorry if you can't see terribly well. It's the curse of actually having to use your hands to place the bands. If I could just say it and it automatically jumped up and did it, it would be so much easier. But as it won't, you'll have to bear with me. We're back to yellow. Now we're going to use a flesh coloured band and I'm using a pastel orange at the moment. It's been quite difficult to get flesh coloured bands and I have been getting some from eBay. Um, they're quite expensive when you do it that way. Um, I hope to have some good news in the next few weeks to a month about where we can easily get um, flesh coloured bands without paying an arm, a leg, a liver and a kidney to do so. But from what I understand, pastel orange, there's tan, there's peach, um, there's light pink. All of these colours work as a flesh tone. I even heard neon orange, but when I tried that it just made my little figurine look like she'd come out of a uh, tanning salon in California and uh, she looked horrendous. Could have been the bleach blonde hair that I had on her as well. Maybe if I just put a red swimsuit on her we could have done Pamela Anderson from Baywatch or something. There we go, my next loom project. We are going to swap now to red bands.
if you remove this one across to here and remove this one across to here I'm going to put three black bands on these pegs here and three black bands on this peg here I'm going to link up these Actually, we'll just put this across like that. That will be nice and easy. I'm going to do his feet. You're going to take two black bands and wrap it around twice. Get three black bands and slide those two black bands onto them. Like that. Find the end of your bands and pop that on one foot. And you're going to do the same on the other foot. Two black bands. Slide them onto your hook, wrap it around three twice, I'm sorry, find three black bands and slide the two black bands onto the three black bands. Find the end of your bands and pop that on his foot. There we go. I'm going to do some crossover bands. So you're going to get single bands this time and stretch them across the five columns. Now this is where you're going to get your little e-beads, your little black e-beads and I swap my um, crochet hook now from 3.75 to a 2.75. I use the 2.75 for fiddly things. Pop my e-bead down it which fits nicely I'm going to use a red single band and slide my e-bead down it and stretch it across as my horizontal crossover band so it's going to have the little bead on there and I'm just going to do those up the next rows like so I actually have four e-beads so I am going to use that fourth one. I didn't think I would but I will. There we go, like that. We're going to put his eyes on and for his eyes we're going to use the two white pony beads and we're going to get a flesh coloured band and pop those on it and we're going to stretch those across the five columns like so and we're also going to put another flesh band across this area and across up here now up here we're going to use a yellow band single and stretch it out and here we're going to use a yellow band and stretch it out here we're going to use a yellow band but we're going to stretch it form a figure eight and push it back on itself so it's it's looped and just pop it on those two pegs there so a visual check that we've done everything we've got our crossover bands we've got our feet we don't have our hands let's do that last we're going to take a single yellow band and hook it over twice get two yellow bands and slide that single band on it and do another two bands and slide on it and we're going to pop this hand just here we're going to do the same on the other side get a single band pop your hook through it and wrap it once and twice get a double band and slide that single band onto it. Find the end of your bands and loop it over. Get another pair of yellow bands and slide that onto it. And you're going to marry that up the other side like so. Now 
I believe we can start hooking everything in. So going from the feet, I tend to pull a foot out and grab the two bands underneath, holding the foot so it doesn't pop off, and move those two bands up and over. Do the same on the other side, up and over. This one, you're just going to hook and move it to the pin above it, like so. And then we're going to work our way up, digging in, finding the two bands, and moving up. And you're going to want to find the two bands that you placed last, so they would be the top ones. And now we dig down for those two bottom ones here, like so. There we are. And we'll work our way up. So dig down, find those two bands, and work up. I'll meet you at the shoulders. Push these down, there's a lot of bands on them. And if you don't push them down, you will end up with your bands falling off. And then you'll yell at me when your figure doesn't come off the loom nicely and falls apart and it'll be my fault and I'll cry. Okay, so we've done the body, now we're going to loop the face in. Again, look for the, the last bands that you placed, which in my case are these, so hook down and grab them and pull them over. The other side, the next pair are these ones. So this is kind of like when you do a starburst and you're finding the last ones that you placed. Now I've done something silly there I think. Oh, no I didn't. I surprised myself. The last two bands are these ones. Now that's getting tight. When you have something that's getting tight, put your hook in and move it around the outside of the peg and it will actually loosen things up for you. I'll find those bottom two and pull those up. And do the same on the other side. I have moved to using metal crochet hooks because I found the pressure that is on the bands and on the hook, the plastic hooks, was just too much and they were breaking and uh, that was not good for my blood pressure or my language skills. And you're looking for the teardrop shape when you've hooked something in it forms this little teardrop that you're seeing if it doesn't if it looks a bit wonky you know that you might have grabbed the wrong bands um, you might have forgotten to loop something in and you want to rectify that before you actually pull your construct off the loom so our last two are these ones, 
don't forget them, they're hidden down the bottom. Ease that up. So we just check that we have got teardrops all the way down, and we do. So I'm going to get two clear bands. And the reason I don't usually use a clip at the end and I just leave the clear bands up is because I normally attach these to a keychain um, clip so my kiddo can put them on her backpacks and stuff like that. Pop the two clear bands on the end of your hook after you've pushed it down through the centre and out through the side. As I pull this back up I twist the hook gently just a little bit so that the back end of the hook goes past those bands and then I twist it back again as I pull it up through the channel. You're going to pull that those clear bands to the back of the pe peg, the pin, and attach the end to your hook. Take the two side the, the two bands closest to you, lift them up and over and drop them off the end of your hook. And you've now basically just made a little slip knot and that's going to be quite secure. Then I use the back end of a metal crochet hook to ease my little figure off the loom. And I use that just for all the the bits that this the bits that have got a lot of bands on. I don't want them to break. Um, if it's just pulling the bands off a regular one that's not too th thick, doesn't have too many bands on, then I will just pull it. But for example, like here where I have the arms attached, that's a lot of bands and that would easily break a band, pull your loom apart, get you frustrated. I mean, you can't sleep at night, make you need chocolate. Okay, so here is Cartman. Now we have to stretch him out a bit. Remember I said he's a tubby little chap. So pull him out sideways. Pull these arms out so that they pop like so. And he normally has a kind of angry expression on his face. So using a Sharpie, and he has these little pins of pupils on his eyes, right in the middle. You're just gonna do the small little eyes like so. You're going to use a black band for his mouth. So we're gonna stab him through the head. Find a spot that you want his mouth to be. And then go the corresponding side. Pick up the end of your band and pull it through. What I try to do so that I'm only hooking one end of a band onto a clip is put both ends on my hook and pull one end over the other. It kind of just knots it a little bit. I happen to be using an S clip today. Just hook that on. And if you're not going to be doing this on a uh, keychain, take those two ends and you can push them down the back of him and attach those to the other end of the S clip so that they're sort of hidden and out of sight. Pretty his mouth up a bit because you pulled it taut. His mouth has sort of disappeared into his head a little bit. mine has got a bit of a cheeky grin on his face. And there you have Cartman.